guys, my greetings to everyone. I am Seema and I welcome you all on Discuss Agile webinar series. Discuss Agile Network is an initiative to connect Agile practitioners so that they can share their experiences and take their knowledge and skills to the next level. Topic of today's session is Necessary Behavioral Skills Required for an Agile Team to Reap Agile Benefits. Our guest speaker today is Amit Srivastava. Amit is working with SCI Technologies in a capacity of group project managers. As part of Agile Center of Excellence, he is playing the role of Agile consultant and coach, helping projects in their Agile journey. At SCI, he got the opportunity to partner with projects and clients having varying Agile maturity level. Few are just starting their Agile journey, whereas others are at higher maturity level with collaboration and automation. Over to you, Amit. Thank you, Seema, for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Amit Shibhastha. As Seema shared, I'm working with uh, XA Technologies as uh, uh, Agile coach consultant. Uh, helping projects and working with projects uh, at uh, at CL, uh, you know, we get we get quite a good opportunity to work with varied kind of projects uh, where the agile maturity level is you know people are in fact the projects are starting their journey on agile as well as uh, uh, there are projects which are actually uh, really quite mature on agile and having all well defined uh, uh, automation CI practices as well as uh, there's good collaboration happening with the customer, and uh, so they are uh, pretty mature on the agile front. So across all bend, we get an opportunity to work with the uh, projects, and uh, so my this session is specifically around the, the behavioral skills which uh, I feel are required for an agile team to truly reap the agile benefit. Why I picked up this topic was uh, like we see that there are many projects which adopt Agile, but they actually struggle to uh, realize the benefits of Agile. And when we try and uh, when we get inside the project details, that is where we try to find out. We 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 come to know that you know the basic practices are happening, but the right behavior is not there. So that's why I thought to take up this point in this topic today, and. Uh, what we have done is I'll uh, run through the topic and whatever uh, whatever things that I have this is uh, I have on, on slides this is based on my experience and uh, we'll take up the questions at the last of the session I hope this is fine with everyone so uh, yeah so as I said uh, we we are talking about the behavioral skills so at this point in time uh, I'll have one question that I want to ask each one of you, and it will be there on your panel, uh, on your panel, uh, where you can answer. It, that what is uh, what is the uh, what is the difference? Uh, are the agile team member different from a normal team? Normal, uh, you know, uh, people who are developing, uh, maybe in a different methodology. So do you think is there a difference in uh, in uh, being a member of agile team and being a member of a non-agile team? So, so you should have these polls. Uh, okay, uh, Amit, I'm launching first poll. Yeah. Yeah, it is here. Yeah, we can. Uh, what's the result that you see, Simo? Yeah, approximately seventy-five percent people are saying yes, and twenty-five uh, percent people are saying no. Okay. Okay. Great. Can we put up the second question? Yeah, I'm closing the pool, first poll. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the second question is, question is, as per you, for a successful Agile project team, who, what do you think is that uh, is the main contributor? Yeah, so basically, uh, what we're trying to, what I'm trying to find out is, from your thought process, for a successful Agile project, do you think it's because the Agile project succeeds because of people, because of process of because of automation. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Five percent for process, people, and automation, and ten percent for third option that is automation, people, and process. Okay, uh, so like there could have been more uh, permutation combination of this, but mm -hmm. what uh, I wanted to uh, I wanted to understand uh, that what the audience think is the main contributor. 
So the thing that comes out is that people, you all think that people who are behind uh, executing a successful agile project. So the first, coming to the first question, that that coming to the first question, as in, um, what is the difference between the team, the, the person who is working in agile team, as opposed to a person who is working in a non-agile team? As such, the developer is developing in in both the environment, so there is not enough, not much difference. What different comes up is is primarily in the way uh, the person carries the attitude towards completion of the work. It primarily uh, comes out, uh, you know, with the kind of collaboration and the kind of uh, soft skills that are that place in an agile uh, scenario. And on the second, the second question, the answer to the second question and the poll also suggested you all agree to this that people is the central piece, the, the people or a developer or a person is the central uh, central piece uh, behind any successful uh, execution of agile project. So. On, on the same lines, what I'll do is, uh, so now when we know that there's this uh, human person is there, so what is it that differentiate uh, from uh, different, what is the differentiation that happened that is there between a person A and a person B? So it primarily happens uh, on the behavioral skill side. So that is what we'll try to cover. Now, uh, before moving ahead, we'll just quickly spend a minute on uh, our Agile Manifesto. So what Agile Manifesto says is, it talks about individuals and interactions. It talks about working software. It talks about customer collaboration and uh, how to handle change and uh, you know receptive to change. So uh, as we know, um, working in a traditional and iterative or a waterfall model, there were challenges around all these things and we all aware of it. The, the thing is, what is it? What are the kind of things? which a person should focus on or agile team should focus on uh, when it comes to you know handling individuals and interaction you know the uh, the the idea around uh, churning out working software quite frequently and the importance of collaborations so uh, those are the things which actually creates uh, which actually create the difference so now this is a figure uh, what it primarily show is it's it's a representation of collaboration. So, in an agile team, what we think, what we think is that whatever so the color shows the different skill sets which are there in the person in the team, and uh, so there could be architect, developer, tester, DA. But uh, for a successful completion of an agile project, they all have to collaborate and work as one team. The focus is here is on one team. Now. Um, Another thing, if you talk about, is what this figure show. This figure is talking about communication. So there has to be effective communication, verbal communication, and the, the centerpiece is communication. People should be aware of what is happening. So we all understand that uh, in Agile, we talk about transparency, and whether it's a client or a team, everybody is aware of what is the current status of uh, the project. So collaboration is one, uh, communication is another area that uh, Agile team focus on. What else? Now, this figure is uh, primarily, it talks about the customer connect. So frequent connect with the customer. Basically what is here, so uh, for any successful Agile project, you have to have decent enough amount of connect with the customer. Customer should be participated. So what I'm trying to do is, based on the importance of, uh, based on the manifesto, based on the things which are coming from manifesto, I'm trying to highlight those things. And then we will see what are the typical skills that we think uh, are required. So, uh, and there's one more that talks about express delivery. So it's a basically a frequent delivery that we are saying. So in Agile, uh, we talk about uh, collaboration, communication, uh, effective communication, frequent delivery. So uh, what happens is uh, to inculcate these things, uh, process is something you can define a process. So like in Agile, we have uh, the Scrum, which is uh, the a very good, uh, a little, in a way, little prescriptive framework which tells how to do and what to do so that these specific uh, things are, uh, the Agile manifesto is meant. And so any project like which tries to adopt Agile, 
it starts by following Scrum. Uh, uh, Scrum. So, but essentially, if you follow Scrum, Scrum would tell you a process, which talks about um, the sprint backlog, creating, doing the sprint planning, doing the daily stand-up review, retrospection, and all. But actually, is this happening effectively, or or so? What we have seen, what I have seen in my experience is that there are a lot of projects which follow Scrum. But when it comes to actual uh, assessing their maturity, that is where you know, they, they struggle. So these activities are done from a process mindset. And the reason being that people do not understand the underlying, uh, underlying part behind it. Uh, we, so just uh, in order to you know, uh, reap the benefits, we, we see that uh, there is a lot of uh, effort which is required in, from the organization side uh, to on the on the behavioral side of how do you work and how do you really appreciate the things. So, what what we think at the team level, there are certain behaviors which a dial team member should exhibit, and we'll see, you know, when we are creating a team, how we can figure out whether the person actually understand agile, understand the, the the things, and what is what is their understanding, and accordingly we can plan for you know different ways of training them and mentoring them. So sorry, so. Uh, one of the behavior is that the person should know collaboration. Now we all understand collaboration. What we need to do is we need to figure out whether the person in the agile team does he understand collaboration or not. Well, how we can check that? So one of the one of the way of doing that is uh, you, know, you can ask, you can interact with him and ask different kind of questions based on your experience. One of the questions I've mentioned here is the think back on the recent project. Give me an example of a time you had to work with other people to make sure that you could finish something. So here, you can talk to him, interact with him, and see how did he respond. And based on uh, the response, you can figure out whether that person truly understands collaboration or not. So collaboration is one uh, behavior. The another one that I am talking here about: Do they ask for help? So this is one um, one basic problem that we see that do the, the, the people who are coming from a traditional mindset or people hesitate to ask questions and uh, people hesitate even if it's not a question if a person is not able to do something they hesitate to take help so this is the culture that we need to build up uh, in the agile team that you know everybody is not a champion of uh, the technology that they work on and we all work as a team and learn on the go so how do we ask them what is it you know how do we understand so another one way of saying is uh, so we can ask him something like that that think back to your most recent project tell me about the time when you did not understand something and what did you do so basically probing them to identify truly do they understand do they speak when they are not able to do something and I think we all are uh, mature enough to understand and uh, how to interact with these uh, with, 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 with the agile team members and find out you know, these aspects. Another thing is uh, that I'm talking is, are they willing to take a small step and seek feedback? So this is one more uh, area uh, which needs a little intervention here. What happens is uh, people uh, have the habit of completing the thing, you know, in totality. So uh, generally. Uh, you know, generally, uh, when we talk about not doing the things, not overdoing the things. At the same time, when you are uh, completing, a, a, you know, doing any code piece, any code bit that you're doing, is it only covering the area which you are supposed to do, or, or at times people, you know, and as a team also, people talk about uh, only showing something when it is, you know, completed. So we have to see that the team. And the uh, agile team member understand that agile is about taking small steps, and then as a second step, it's about uh, do we seek feedback? So is that feedback, uh, you know, is in the mind of the person? So as a developer, we all ask questions, but is it with the right mindset? Do we wait for seeking the feedback? Do we wait for getting the feedback? Do we really understand the importance of feedback? So all that is to be imbibed in the behavior of the individual. The way I have uh, uh, I try to keep it is uh, you know, uh, one question is tell me how you like to work. Take back to the last feature you worked on. Did you try to finish the whole thing before you asked for the feedback, or 
So depending on initiation of this conversation, if he says yes, you can ask why. If he says no, you can still go ahead and ask why and then probe him to understand does he really uh, understand the important feedback. Now, uh, so that was about feedback. There is something called uh, do they try to work on something that is good enough for now? So uh, it is something which is uh, in sync with the second point that I talked about. Now, working in, along with working in steps, small steps, only working on things which are required at this point in time. So we have seen uh, uh, the developers, uh, in fact, I would say I would not call developer only, I would say we have seen the agile team member who with the teams would struggle. Uh, to reap the benefits. Basically, you know, the whole team work around and thought process around completing a feature and then delivering it. And not knowing whether, you know, not understanding that probably what things that they are working on, once they show it to the customer, it might, it might, uh, you know, customer might give some different feedback or change the requirement. So the idea is that the team should have the understanding of uh, to work on something which is actually good enough for that moment. There could be various combination of this, but uh, what I'm talking about that the understanding of this thought should be there. The focus should be on the immediate delivery which is required. So uh, the question that I put in is, tell me about a situation when you did not know everything at the beginning of the project. What did you do? So you can come up with a situation maybe in the middle of the project. Uh, if you have, uh, if you, if, if things were not clear, what did you do? So to initiate this kind of conversation, that would help you to understand this aspect. The another one that I've mentioned here is uh, you know, they can adapt. So now we all, Agile is about uh, adaptation uh, to different changing environments. So we all understand the importance of adaptation. We have to uh, ask about, uh, you know, understand whether the team truly understand these aspects. Now, um, I put in a question here. Tell me about a time when you did not have the condition you would like, your, you would have liked for your project. What did you do? Maybe, you know, uh, if you are, so adaptation means maybe uh, the way your current project is working, if, if there was any change, what did you do at that point in time? What you able to handle that kind of change? It can go uh, to a level of, you know, um, if, uh, for example, a person moved out of the team or a situation came up when, a person was not available, he was not well, or whatsoever. How did you react in that situation? So when we initiate these kind of discussion, um, there could be different ways of asking things, asking these aspects. And the, 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 the sixth one, which is the last one that I think is, um, you know, are they willing to work outside their expertise? So this this uh, actually talks about cross scaling also. So if a situation arises, how do, so they are developer, but how do they collaborate with the testers? Are they actually uh, willing to do that? Is, does that mindset, does, uh, does the team or individual have that mindset? It could be about that, it could be about doing uh, you know, work which is beyond his typical scope of work. So we have to see uh, this aspect also. So I have put in a question, tell me about the time you took on the work to help them. What was like what was that like? Or tell me about a time when you did something you thought was not in a job description. What did you do? So primarily, uh, you know, these are the different areas which I think uh, are are the behavioral side of the individual, which should be you know the individual uh, and a member of a good agile team. He should be good on handling all these aspects. So this is what I am trying to uh, say. Uh, say here. So based on uh, uh, Based on uh, the entire, uh, you know, at an individual level, if we extrapolate it and see uh, at a team level what it translates to, and from an agile standpoint, uh, agile behavioral standpoint, what are the things uh, it translates to? So it translates to something called self-organizing. So basically, uh, the, is the team uh, a self-organized team or not? So eventually, if we answer the first six question, and if the person is uh, um, the person understand those aspects, he would definitely be a good member of a self organizing team. So the team in which, uh, so if, if the entire team understand those six aspects, it would be a self organized team. 
So at a team level, we say that is the team self-organized. Second one that I say is at a team level, do they uh, focus on continuous improvement? So continuous improvement would eventually come when they understand the feedback. They, 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 they understand the entire feedback cycle. And they have the right mindset. So at a team level, agile team, um, self-organized, continuous improvement. And there's one more that I think is, uh, you know, is the key here for a successful agile implementation is the test first mindset. Now test first mindset is, uh, is we all understand uh, TTTD and all, but I'm talking from a mindset standpoint that the thought process should be that whenever you see the requirement as a team, you know, first start thinking from a test scenarios and then start writing code around. So do the, the team understand this? So we talked about individual level, uh, individual level behavioral aspects. We talked about uh, what uh, what are what are the aspects at a team level? Now, the thing is, uh, what we have seen, in fact, what I have seen uh, in my experience at HCL meeting different projects is, they, if a project is not reaping the benefits, they are definitely struggling in one or the other aspect. Now, it is up to up to the the, the manager, the team, uh, the senior people of the team, or the scrum master. So, I'm I'll not say our role because Everywhere it's different based on the nature of work, but the, the I would call a manager needs to understand uh, first needs himself needs to understand these aspects and needs to figure out what is the missing piece here. So from individual to a team level. Now when we have seen the team level, so you know there are certain things uh, which if you adopt the right behavior the other related things would automatically come. You know, they come, they come in bundled with the behavior. And you'll be, you, uh, uh, you'll be happy to see this, that, you know, we talk of a mindset of shorter delivery cycle. Now, if the mindset is shorter delivery cycle, what would it lead to? It will lead to, uh, you know, development of small increment. And if person and team understand shorter delivery cycle, definitely small incrementally, they'll start maybe you know towards the practice of starting user stories again a shorter delivery cycle would mean that you would start investing on automation piece of regressions and I'm taking just an example now again a frequent delivery cycle would mean that you would uh, you know you would want to invest in automation of the complete deployment chain so adoption, uh, adoption of uh, uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment practice. Now you see, you, you'll be able to relate. We're talking of frequent delivery. You know, we're talking of uh, short of cycle. So all these, when we start working on those direction and and bring those things in our team, automatically it'll lead to certain right uh, behavior on, on the agile side. Now you know, now we want to have a good feedback. Now, when we have, uh, we want to have a feedback from the customer, and suppose if the customer is external user for certain kind of software, we could have a lean startup approach. We could, uh, you know, think of splitting testing, and uh, we could, we could, uh, the team could go ahead and adopt uh, the MVP practice. So th that is where everything is syncing up. You know, to improve communication, obviously, what you will do, you will invest in, uh, you know, tools for uh, which can. Uh, enable the effective communication as the team is sitting distributed. So if you are bringing the right behavior, right behavior would initiate uh, certain things on the agile side, which would lead to, you know, uh, maybe uh, user stories, adoption of user stories, which would lead to automation, continuous uh, deployment, and things like that. So um, now, Basically, uh, at this point in time, uh, I would I would say once these behavior are there, based on our experience uh, and my experience, uh, it can be it it needs to be divided. It needs to be inculcated at every level. Now, with the, uh, at this session, I will probably talk about things which I feel from my experience are important at a developer level or a 
manage the level. But there are if we, if it has to be an agile organization, so the things has to be percolated from top down. And in fact, I'm, I am not going to top down or bottoms up. But what I'll say is that every level should appreciate these basic things, and the organization culture should be in that direction. Now, how to bring that? That could be done using trainings. That could be done using you know webinars like we are having one. That could be done using uh, a small, small event to bring that culture. That could be done using uh, you know uh, senior leadership trainings on the behavioral aspects also, making them understand what are the you know what are the why these things are important. See, the thing is, we all understand to a great extent the importance of all these things. Somewhere it gets diluted when we work in a day-to-day -day, uh, in a day-to-day -day work. So. That is where these things are to be uh, uh, brought in the behavior side. There could be things like, uh, uh, as I said, senior leadership workshop. There could be things like, uh, like some meetups which are doing, which are happening at a pretty different frequency. So what we have to see is that these behavior. Though I'll I, I'll talk about uh, behaviors at developer level and behavior at a managerial level, but these needs to be percolated across the organization. So basically, um, it, so a dial team has all different kind of people. So it goes to uh, as basic as uh, telephone calling skills. So if, if, the, if the people are interacting, so you know, one of the way uh, I was reading somewhere and it clearly said that uh, if you want to succeed in agile, the bottom line is you should be co-located. But the but the fact of uh, the the time is that the teams are distributed. We have people sitting everywhere. Now, how to improve that communication over the telephone and also? So there, there are, uh, so there is an investment which is required uh, on the team side, you know, so that they understand actually do certain uh, behavioral aspects and cover different steps on the telephone calling skills also. That is what I have experienced. Then, second, when telephone is coming, I would not, uh, I would, I would also bring the email writing skills. So. As I as I uh, bought the distributive scenario, so when you write an email, it is how easy it is to write a technical problem and explain it to someone. But if the reality is that your your technical lead or or a person or a BA is sitting on the other side of the world, you have to express it. So um, there is some effort that needs to go in the email writing skills also. And these skills, you know, it's not I would not say they are mandatory, but uh, what I've seen is, if we uh, the problem, if we go to the root cause of the problem, it boils down to the basic skills like these. So, so that is where I'm talking about the developer level. Now, if I if I say it work, you know, there should be some kind of uh, training or awareness program uh, that should be conducted in a how the team should work in a cross cultural environment. And and you know, working a cross-cultural environment, what is the difference? Uh, what are the different aspects that comes into play? Effective listening skills. You know, this is one area where I've seen the team struggling big time. Whether it's a uh, you know, it's any activity, whether it's kind of uh, a daily stand-up or a sprint planning meeting or a review retrospection meeting, we we need to bring in these basic understanding of you know, people should understand what is the importance of all these things. Now, as a as a maybe a, a five seven years of experience person, we may not we may think that we are very good at communication, but when you actually you know go through a proper uh, uh, laid down structured training and aspects of uh, all these things, that is where you understand the important the piece that you are missing out. So, any agile team um, they should be they should be taken to some kind of refresher course that talks about effective listening. Now uh, there are next two that I that that which come here that, uh, are giving feedback and receiving feedback and criticism. Now the feedback uh, talks about all the feedback uh, from all the levels. So that is here we are talking about within the team people interact with each other. It's a very uh, I would say a very uh, interactive environment in an agile team. And the team and the individuals also interact with the customer. So, and the customer also give feedback. The scrum master, the agile manager, if you're following lead, the customer, 
you so feedback is the in thing here now so person should have the ability to actually understand feedback and uh, understand and handle the criticism and also give feedback so the point is uh, people are working in cross cultural different environment person should understand the right thing how the feedback should be taken so uh, that is one area which we've seen uh, which i have seen the team struggling with understanding the importance of assertive communication and the how basically what i mean is uh, you know uh, when it comes to open verbal communication and sharing feedback that is where uh, people hesitate they do not have the they do not understand how to actually convey the problem everything is tied down to you know if somebody is uh, if you're giving a feedback to your manager and if he's playing a role of scrum master you may not be able to give the feedback if you're not happy with something so those kind of aspect are to be handled and the team needs to be trained on as well as the managers needs to be trained on how to handle the, how to uh, you know the importance of assertive communication how to be assertive in uh, when you are communicating with the team or with the client uh, one more is the customer orientation and its importance now we all understand that agile is about the user end user agile is about the customer so the focus is there so we, that is where uh, the team needs to understand the importance of uh, the customer orientation they should understand uh, uh, you know what customer mean or what the end user mean and you know it's not about it's not about one way communication from the team side or an individual to the uh, to the customer so the whatever development happening whatever communication happening everything should have certain orientation so that is where the team should understand uh, the importance of uh, customer orientation now quickly moving to uh, some behavior areas that i think uh, to be addressed at the agile project manager level now don't go please do not go on the designation of project manager i am i i what i am trying to say here is a person who is managing agile project he could be of any role um, but what i'm saying is anybody who is actually managing or spearheading the agile project what are the things that uh, i think should be covered so you know culture i would say that to a good extent once we work in an uh, it organization and once people have around 10 12 experience by that time they start understanding the importance of culture and communication but how why i got this point is because uh you know in my experience i've been working with the, at times the project where the managers are working with indian customer when these managers are put on uh, on on uh, a project where there is uh, uh, the project is maybe a us ep or or apac based that is where you know, things start coming up so so people the the, the idea is if, if you understand this fine but if you do not you should be you know you should cover these aspects speak up and be assertive right because the 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 manager has to be it is manager has to play a very important role in agile because that is where um, he is the one who will help the team to become assertive he is the one who will help the team to communicate so people generally do not have the habit of sharing their things so it's kind of uh, the manager leading the pack so he should understand the importance of uh, you know uh, verbal communication now developing a customer focused approach now this focused approach a team can only understand once the project manager or a manager has that approach so that is where i have written this thing for manager that there should be a customer focused approach there should be uh, you know he should understand the importance of uh, the customer the development is happening the way the development is happening the, the way the deliveries are happening person should understand what actually the customer want and that mindset of the customer so uh, so that is one area now giving and receiving feedback uh, for the managers it is uh, giving feedback is uh, we all uh, give feedback we we like giving feedback but at the same time uh, we should be able to you know really appreciate when we receive feedback because in in uh, and this feedback i'm talking of receiving we all receive feedback from our customer but we are i'm talking of receiving feedback from the agile team so what things are working what things are not working for example uh, when you are doing a retro 
in the retro in the retro meeting someone might bring out some certain aspect you know which is about the way things are being managed so a person should be able to uh, understand and receive that kind of feedback how to how to handle that situation managing and coaching cross functional team so like agile is about uh, you know cross functional team and there would be people who may be who may be uh, far more senior then the scrum master or the manager maybe some technical architect maybe you know, so you you might get varied people in a cross function in, in your team so you should have the ability to manage them now uh, how to do that what to do so there are different uh, trains which comes on this which are which are there uh, on this but that is the skill which one individually needs to develop now there are other uh, few things which which i talk about is critical thinking making tough decisions and managing change now uh, in the in, I'm, I'm just trying to be a little fast in the interest of time because we know code open for some questions but uh, uh, the all these three areas uh, the person the, the agile manager should have this mindset where he can critically analyze things how the things are progressing he can take tough decisions not take tough taking tough decisions talk about means you know handling your customer also if if you know they are trying to be more uh, you know getting into the your shoes so those kind of things taking tough decisions for the team in the interest of the project so this is one area and um, the last one which is actually not the least but uh, one of the most important is leading the pack when it comes to handling all these kind of uh, you know behavioral aspects and when it comes to changing in the work environment he is the one who should uh, uh, who should lead the change and because once you lead then only you will be able to actually appreciate and uh, and resist the change you can convince people to adopt certain new style so these are the things which uh, which i think uh, in my uh, in my in my experience are certain important things which the manager should have now uh, most of us uh, most of us might think that we have these areas and it's not about when i'm saying us it's not about the people here i'm saying with respect to when we get into that shoe of managing the entire project we think that we might have but we have to take a step back and see actually uh, do we need to be mentored on some of the other areas because uh, when you, when it when it comes to working on agile and uh, you know, making a project successful your soft skill and the behavioral skill are the key things which comes into play remaining automation and process related thing if you are adopting scrum or if you are adopting kanban these thing can take care and automation is something which is more of technology driven but the right behavior right mindset uh, has to be driven by the manager now i would uh, i would i would uh, what say where this is leading to so if the team has the right mindset and they understand and they are the right uh, they, are, they have the right behavior uh, as an agile team where this is leading to and that is where i'll uh, i'll start so basically it is leading to a human centric approach so everything is around uh, so when team understand the importance of end customer importance of end user so eventually the development mindset is primarily getting towards a human centric approach focus on people customer and the needs not on specific technology or condition so again um is respective of technology we focus on customers and people and you know i think some of you might uh, might might Uh, understand where i am going but uh, innovation at the intersection of business technology and people now what what this mean is uh, you know when you start working with the human centric approach automatically things start falling in place and there is uh, it will primarily lead to innovation so this is taking us to to um, to an area which is uh, so last line that says is because the user is one who decide the product so this is taking us to a uh, area which is called i would say uh, design thinking so the thing is if you adopt the right behavior right mindset and if you if your team is able to inculcate all this in uh, in your uh, 
in your uh, all this in your behavior you are by default going towards adopting the design thing which would which is uh, which is a new way of of developing and understanding you know uh, the right product for the end customer so this is where um, so uh, this is what i wanted to share uh, i would uh, request you all in case you have any question you can write those questions in the question box and then we will take up the questions yes i mean few questions are coming in i'm assigning you yeah. uh, one question here okay. uh, and if you can mention yeah, the it name, is. Uh, mr pankaj is asking example of tough yeah. decisions example of tough decisions i have assigned you this question okay i'm just seeing the questions i see example of tough, tough decisions, decisions okay yes. okay okay example of tough decisions is uh, when uh, you are doing a sprinting and if you think if you think uh, uh, if you are doing a sprint plan a sprint planning is a key thing a key activity for us for a sprint to happen now you have to ensure that everybody is coming and participating and the customer is also participating so the tough decision it it could boils down to as simple as you know not conducting the meeting if the product owner or the customer is not available enforcing that that we will only conduct the meeting because we want to cut down on uh, the the repetitive things so those kind of thing uh, we would want uh, you know the scrum master or the manager who is managing things should be very clearly and very assertively able to communicate to the customer so tough decisions could be on individual could be on uh, you know the the, uh, the behavioral side of the people as simple as if the people are not coming on time on uh, on uh, for a daily standard some really tough decision needs to be taken it, so so that is what i can say the point is uh, anything which you think there is a resistance to 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 that that becomes a tough decision but it needs to be enforced so 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 that you know and one more point i would say is uh, uh, and i think we all understand this enforcing actually does not mean that the people start uh, appreciating that but at the same time we might have to do a little enforcement for people to do the right behavior so that is a judgment call and individual has to take but yes uh, there are certain things that we need to enforce i hope that helps okay uh, yes. i have unmuted uh, pankaj uh, if you would yes, like to discuss anything pankaj would you like to discuss further No, I think Amit has already given the answers. Okay, so I'm assigning I'm assigning another question. Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Yes, Here it is. So, should we sell the agile to team in beginning if they has always worked on traditional waterfalls? Should we sell the agile to a team in the beginning? So I think what the question says. should we sell agile to a team when they are saying team team means the customer and the the current agility uh, team because agile is about the customer also and i'm assuming that in this question the customer is uh, part uh, is is part of this agile mm -hmm. so so i would say that uh, if the if the team is working in agile and the customer is working in agile so it's not about our selling it's about the customer to understand what the agile is and what are the benefits of it now we get us we get a situation and also at at sel we get these kind of situation where customer is coming with a mindset of that we want to adopt agile he has heard it from somewhere or whatever he is everybody to a good extent know agile is solving problems so so uh, they don't they don't understand that agile is not silverable they don't understand that uh, agile what is the kind of involvement that is required from the customer side hence whenever we are selling agile we need to be very clear to the customer that what is it that is there for them at the developer side we would definitely take care of our things because we want to do agile right uh, but so and anybody who is already working in waterfall uh, you know they have to work on making uh, you know on the on the interaction part because that is one thing where customer says that you know I'll not be able to join the meeting I'll not be able to interact maybe every alternate day so those are the kind of things which needs to be spoken to the customer before uh, selling a joint how that helps 
Okay. So another question is I'm assigning to you. Yeah. Here it is. How does Agile differ in product and non-product uh, project environment? Aman is asking this question. How does Agile differ in a product and non-product project environment? Okay, so essentially the question is how does Agile differ in a product environment and a project environment? So when it comes to project, I would say I would take it uh, as a project like you know any any IT service company. So um, to start with, the uh, the primary difference that comes up is in the budget. So when it comes to IT service environment, in fact when it comes to a product environment, and if you as an organization as a member of a product of a product development team in an organization, you have already a budget which is allocated to the project, and, and it's your baby. However, when it comes to a team which is working in a project environment, the project budget and everything is defined by the customer and governed by the customer. And here, uh, you know, and if uh, the, the it, it becomes a little complicated when the customer asks for a fixed price for that kind of a project and still asks to do a job, assuming that we would be able to incorporate change. So uh, it starts from working. Uh, the, the primary difference that comes up in a product and a project environment is that product. If you're working on a product, it is funded by your own organization, it's funded by your own group. They understand the challenges and they are part of it. However, if it's a project environment where the customer is external, so avoid getting into a fixed price kind of contract uh, on a project environment. Okay. I hope uh, uh, that helps. Yeah. Yeah. So I have okay. assigned another question to you. How do we become yes, agile sure. across business consulting, pre sales, etc.? Right. How do we become agile uh, across, across business, business consulting, consulting pre-sales, etc.? Very interesting question. I'll give you certain clues. Basically, one: if we first, these are the people who are interacting or interfacing with the customer, so they need to understand the agile. Okay. When they understand agile, they, you know, how you have to do and ensure, and so you might have to take uh, some trainings with them if you are part of our, you know, uh, so they need to go through certain uh, trainings. For them to start understanding agile, and so that they actually interface the customer and understand and work on these terminologies. However, uh, if it is about their working on the agile, that is a bigger piece. So, because if I take an, I take a business consulting. So, if you're doing a consulting for a firm, the firm should understand what agile is. Then you can do your current work in the agile base. So you can you can uh, for your specific areas uh, of work, you can you know have a fixed. Time where you can work on certain requirements, certain uh, things that you do, and uh, you know after. So if I say take an example of Scrum, the Scrum talks about having certain requirements, then working on those, and then doing a retrospection. So whatever are the requirements, maybe it's technical or maybe it's something you know on the business side, you can definitely run Scrum in that scenario. So but the key here is for them to understand the agile in Scrum, but it can very well be adopted. Arjun, I, I think that helps. Yeah. Let me know if. if, if yeah. So I, I see one more question from Ashur Ashurva Jain. How to manage difference of opinion within agile team? How difficult you find managing member within your team? Excellent question. So uh, Ashurva, basically, I'll take the first part. How to manage difference of opinion within the agile team? I think uh, I think we all understand. Uh, how we can do this, and let's let's just think logically. If there is a difference of opinion, what will we do? In fact, I'll relate it with one of the uh, one of the exercise uh, which is uh, advocated by Scrum. You know, that is planning poker. So, <clears throat> planning poker, what it, what it do is it, uh, you you read a story, and there are four, five members in the team. They read the story and they understand, and they you know estimate, give a number of it, number uh, estimate the size of it. Now. That is where the difference of the opinion comes. One person say that it is. I'll just talk in hours for now. It is kind of eight hours. The other say it is sixteen hours. Now, if there is a clear difference in opinion, what you'll do is you'll ask them, okay, why do you think this is this? Why do you think it is sixty? Let everybody understand, and again do a rebid on that. And if you think it is not, uh, they are not converging to something common understanding, then some experienced person needs to take a call. There is no other way out. So. That's probably one way that you can manage the difference of opinion, and 
opinion difference of opinion would definitely subside if the understanding of the things uh, you know of the context that you're talking is common so get into the root cause of uh, why the difference is there and try to uh, minimize that the other part is how difficult you find to manage member within a team i think it's a very general question managing member uh, <laughs> uh, how difficult so actually if if uh, you know what is the difficulty that you are talking about? Is it you know uh, they they are not gelling with each other, or is it they are not coming on time, or what is the difficulty that you are talking about? If you can tell me that, uh, I'll be able to answer this more better way. I'll I'll quickly go on to the the next question. What would be the good time to take a tough decision? Wow. <laughs> there's no good time, and there's no bad time as such. You have to take tough decisions when you when you when you feel the need is there. See, we are talking of uh, the behavioral aspect. Now, every team dynamics is different. Every team situation is different. Every team is different. So, the time to take a tough decision it totally depends on the context. And uh, so, I would say, like I was taking an example of uh, that sprint planning in one of the questions. Now, if you know that in the sprint planning you have you cannot conduct the sprint planning without the involvement of the customer. Customer says that I will not be able to come today. Let's do tomorrow. Right, you and you know that if you delay it by one day, your sprint is getting delayed. So we either we have to work out that okay, if this is situation one of the avoidable condition, we can do it uh, right now without product owner. But then you know the right kind of behavior should be there from the product owner. So what I would say is that depending on the situation, there is no no one uh, you know, no one particular time that is the time for tough decision. But you should have. You should be ready to take tough decisions in the interest of the product. Good number of questions are coming um, because I think I think uh, that answers that helps you with the answer. Is it important to understand motivation of the team? How do we motivate a team to become high performing? Awesome question. And this is one question which uh, actually we we uh, we so Mudit Mahajan raised the question. I think he's he is left, but still I'll I'll bring this point. Um, motivation in itself is a very different, uh, you know, very different, uh, I would say, uh, aspect to handle for the team. So we talk of self-motivation, we talk of self-organization, but motivation, uh, how do, it, but it is very important to understand the motivation of the team. But uh, how do we motivate the team? Probably, uh, you know, okay, okay. I was just saying that motivation of the team uh, is one way is giving them right feedback at the right time, because. Generally, in Agile, what we've seen is, uh, I'll not go into various aspects of motivation, but uh, what I've seen is, uh, what once the people start getting their uh, you know, continuous feedback about the work that they do, they really feel good and happy about it. What you can do is, uh, you know, daily you can, uh, you know, you, you can have a board where you can write, uh, you can write the overall mood of the team. That will help you to, uh, and you can answer, have a, you know, smiley and a normal face and a sad face. And if, if the team morale is depending on that, you can put it there, put, put the face there. And accordingly, you can figure out what's the state of the team. So, but getting motivation, uh, motivating a team is, is, is beyond the scope of the session. Uh, you can definitely connect with me offline, we will be able to uh, uh, discuss on this. How do we assess the maturity of a child's company over the project period? Excellent question. So. Uh, generally, what we do is, uh, what uh, I do is, uh, we interact with the with the, with the Agile projects, and we uh, we have a, a defined roadmap on asking different kind of questions, right from the requirement inception to the uh, you know to the entire uh, covering the entire development life cycle, and going till the deployment and all, and how the whether the organization support is there or not. So. Uh, it, the, the methodology is just discussion and uh, you know working with the project, working with the Scrum Master team, and seeing what is their maturity level. And uh, you know, so and I would say uh, what we have seen is generally uh, there are a lot of behavioral aspects which are uh, which are there that plays a role in the maturity of the team. So it's primarily a discussion based uh, where we assess them on aspects of uh, you know adapt. The process actually that they follow to a certain extent, but mainly on how is the automation there, is the continuous integration there, continuous build, uh, and what is the tool suite is there. All those aspects are covered in the assessment. And I am just running a little fast uh, because, uh, in terms of the time, uh, there's another question from. 
please provide an example of innovation at the intersection of business technology. Thank you. Excellent question. So basically, uh, it, it goes to, in fact, these innovations can be, uh, you know, as small as, uh, so if you're working in, in an office, right, uh, and you do your timesheet, your, your timesheets are, are, are sub get, getting submitted now in the system. Now, you could, some, if, if you know the real need of the people, people work across different hours, people do a lot of travel. If this kind of thing can come on our mobile, that is one innovation that we're talking about there. But the idea is, this is a small idea, but if you see, it is it impacts the way the entire business is done, it impacts the technology and the people. It, it, so if the thought process is uh, on uh, on uh, is people-centric, definitely it will lead to uh, a lot of innovative ideas coming in. I hope I really need that answer that, that helps. Uh, currently I'm facing a hard time facing people, including chief architect himself, who are extremely resistant to changing Wow, agile for the existing process. Well, so actually, um, point is, uh, see, they, if, if the organization where you're working or the project or the engagement is moving towards agile, they need to understand and embrace agile. There is no way out. So probably, uh, you know, they need to be educated, mentored around, uh, you know, understanding of what agile is, what is the importance of collaboration and on collaboration interaction, and uh, that is where uh, uh, that is where. They have to. They might have to go through certain trainings or under, to understand, or they might have to be, you know, actually instructed by people to start participating and behaving in the in the uh, right way. So this is one example of tough decisions that we can talk about. You know, tough decisions from a from a senior person, uh, you know, who can push this chief chief architect to start understanding agile and participating. Because once he actually do that, he will himself start realizing the benefit of it. Uh, how we can handle conflict between uh, agile team and work towards promoting a healthy work environment. Sometimes we leave the work behind in resolving that the team got the team is especially in a pressure filled environment. This is what I understand where you're coming from. So uh, every team actually which goes into agile comes has a phase. Uh, an initial phase they generally have to face this. So because Agile team talks about uh, uh, when you get into agile, it brings in a lot of transparency, and that is where uh, that is where things start. You know, things start becoming a little tough for the team members. So, um, in fact, there is no shortcut. The thing is, you start. Uh, you st so that is where if you're following a scrum, the scrum is a little prescribed which says do this, do this, do this at certain times. If you are doing it, let the team. Uh, you know. You have to work out ways, and you again maybe involving tough decisions, maybe involving some kind of you know uh, reward or some kind of you know. So you have to do different techniques in order to ensure that people start following what they are doing, uh, what they're supposed to do. It it might go to uh, things like entering and filling the timesheets, entering the amount of work to done today. So uh, there is no shortcut, but yes, its behaviors needs to be inculcated in the team, and it takes time. So generally, for a scrum team, it takes four, three to four sprints for um, you know for for the team to actually start embracing agile. How to map <coughs> TMP and scrum? So, <coughs> Mahesh, basically, uh, agile <coughs> or scrum doesn't talk anything about TMP. And as how to map TMP and scrum? So. <coughs> The thing is, Scrum, Scrum uh, talks about uh, certain, uh, you know, inculcating certain behaviors in the team, uh, so that these quick cycle of feedback cycles are, are are established. People are delivering in short time, and uh, there is effective collaboration and communication. Now, PMP, uh, PMP in itself, it talks about I think uh, nine knowledge areas and uh, five process steps knowledge areas. Mapping them to uh, Scrum is unnecessary overkill. Either you follow a Scrum or you follow him, then be better. You know, so it is better to keep them separate because Scrum is not Scrum or for that matter Agile is not about a process. However, PMP is actually about a process. They are very prescriptive of what needs to do at what time. Well, uh, again, another three questions are there. So I'll. Uh, what if customer does not respond or delay to meetings or email in Agile environment? After all, he's a customer, maybe a key stakeholder. Definitely. See, um, it, 
So the answer lies uh, that he has to respond. In case if he's not responding, you need to get into separate discussion with the person, with the customer to, to uh, help them understand the importance of their timely response. In case if they are not responding, uh, where it is impacting. And I, I believe the customer, if a customer is uh, promoting Agile, if a customer is participated in Agile and, and he, he understands the importance of the benefits of Agile, he will definitely understand why, uh, what are the importance of his being there in the meetings. So, so we have to find a work and the, the, the point is we have to make them aware of, uh, aware of what, why they are required. Many times, this is the, this is the point which they do not understand and clearly appreciate. So if you put effort in that direction, I'm sure the customer would uh, understand. And in case, I would say, if the customer does not participate and it's not uh, participated in meeting, feedbacks or not, then probably Agile is not the right methodology to be followed. Now, Vishal uh, asked a question. Sometimes people are not ready to take cross work like developers and not ready to take testing. How to handle that? Okay, the thing is, again, it is a gradual process. So uh, when, when, so it's not like uh, a developer is given a complete tester work. First, we have to call, uh, first we have to promote the collaboration within the team. Now, if the customer, if the developers and uh, understand what is agile, if developer understand that for certain time tester is not there, I might have to do the testing. I think it is more about uh, cross skilling, helping them to understand how to do a test because how to, so he might. You know, he might not be ready to take because he does not have a testing mindset. But as a manager, you should understand their areas of concern, why he's uh, not ready to take the testing. In case it is to do with, uh, you know, any any skill specific work, or uh, at times developer do not take tests because they think that they would be, you know, completely made a full time tester. So if you address these questions at the root, I don't think so. Uh, people should have a problem. And if still, still if they have a problem, then probably you know they need a different kind of different mentoring because they do not understand that going forward, you know, agile. Uh, if you move, take it to the to the way where it goes, is it doesn't talk about you know having even a tester in a team. So everybody's a tester in a group. So that's the way we can take it. And uh, I have the the last question that I see here is uh, from Shri Harsha. Hello, Amit. A quick question. Uh, we talked about human-centric approach. If you, as a Scrum Master, do not have the choice to choose the team, how would you manage any kind of behavioral clashes? Awesome question. And that is a very, that is a, 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 a problem, but that is a real scenario also. So specifically, I think, Shriyarsha, you're coming from the IT service background where, where uh, you are given a team to execute a project. Or any case, but uh, you are, uh, you are given a team. So what, See, um, you can still, uh, so it's about handling, uh, making, again, about making the team understand what the agile is. So you would not every time get people, the best people. You would not every time get the the, uh, you know, the right kind of people. But again, uh, it's all about how to inculcate those behavior in these individuals. And uh, we have our own specific ways to bring those things, but, you know, uh, the training, the mentoring, the the, the, the regular uh, you know conduction of webinars, regular uh, you know small small meetups, all these play a big role in bringing that agile culture. And when when people and I I will tell you um, I've, I've seen that there are teams which really struggle, but once they settle down in agile after three four five sprints, adopt. I'm talking only of Scrum right now. That is where they start really appreciating the agile. That is where they start really, you know, when they get the feedback, whatever they have developed, they are able to see, they get the feedback from the customer. So those kind of things are really uh, very motivated. And uh, the team becomes, you know, initially there would be a little pressure, but, but slowly the team start uh, embracing agile and, and you know, things settle down. Uh, I think. Okay, Amit. Are there. Yes, Any other questions? Uh, we have reached the time box and uh, I okay. thank you for your valuable insight necessary uh, uh, for uh, any Agile team and uh, I also thankful for all the participants in their participation and uh, uh, we have reached the time box and uh, I thank you all and uh, we have to end the webinar.
uh, thanks everyone and uh, uh, feel free to connect with me uh, my, my my details are there on the meetup uh, thing you can connect with me on linkedin and uh, you can contact me if there are any questions anything offline you want to connect with me. yeah and we Thank do you so much. we do frequent webinars uh, on the discuss agile platform and we publish all those events uh, time to time and uh, we can join we can share our experiences uh, to reach the next level of uh, in implementing agile uh, in our organization yeah thank you everyone thanks everyone